fabulous crocheters. I hope you're all keeping well as we head into the autumn. It's actually a really nice day outside, but I can see the leaves beginning to gather in the corner of the garden and fall off the trees with every little gust of wind. So we're definitely heading into colder days as I sit here um, looking down the garden, as I said. Um, so I'm here to introduce you to part six of my sunshine and showers crochet along. I should say I'm here to introduce you to the video for part six and in this part of the pattern I designed it to look like little pumpkins sitting in a field ready to be picked for Halloween. Um, so it's quite a simple piece of the pattern but it's got these lovely big bold bobbles on it and so Emma has done a video to show you how to make these bobbles and carry the yarn along at the back of the work. Um, I hope you're going to enjoy it and if you've got any feedback, if you want to know anything about the project, if you haven't started it already then you can head over to the website and download the patterns. It's called the Sunshine and Showers Blanket and you will find the other parts of the videos. We've done one to five. Emma's done them already and they are here on our YouTube channel. Um, that's it for me. I hope you enjoy this part of the blanket. Have fun and I'll see you soon. Off we go then for part six and um, you can call them bobbles if you like, but they're pumpkins. We all know this. Um, a really lovely piece to work this one because if making uh, bobbles is new to you, you can really focus on that because in between we've just got some lovely rows of different coloured um, double crochet. So hopefully not too taxing. We're also going to carry some yarn across the back. Um, I'll show you how to do that as well. And um, that should be um, not too taxing, hopefully, and you can just have a lovely time making fields and fields of pumpkins. Right, we're back on at the end of um, um, part five, <laughs> you said six, part five here, and we've got our um, stitch holder in the last stitch. Now, obviously, you're probably just continuing on, but if your last stitch is on a stitch holder, you can take that out. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that stitch back. So I'll turn it to the correct working side. Take it back to the last stage of the stitch because we're going to change uh, yarn colour to petrol on that last pull through. And I'm working a four and a, with a four and a half mil hook for this because we've got those nice sort of small, small stitches. So through I go with petrol. That's my... Um, that's my first colour that I'm going to use. So I'm currently on the wrong side of the work. So I'm going to make one turning chain and turn. And I'm going to work a row of double crochet. And you can work over those ends if you like. One at a time or both. I tend to do both. It's probably bad practice. So maybe just do one at a time. And all I'm going to do... Um, just in case you missed that before, I'll show you how to work over an end. So I'm going to put my hook through the stitch to make my double crochet in the normal way. I'll get my, my most recent end, the petrol end. I'll put my hook underneath it and I'll make my stitch over the top. And if I continue to do that for sort of, I don't know, six or eight stitches, it will be... The end will be nicely caught in and I'll show you on the back in a moment. Um, so that's just a little reminder. If you have a look, the end is caught in the back there. And that's one less to sew in, isn't it? So uh, much of this, much of this uh, section, this part, part six, is double crochet. So I shan't bore you with watching how to double crochet because we know that very, very well, don't we? So... I shall continue this row. This is row 11 um, in petrol. And when I get to the end of uh, row 11, I'm going to work a second row in petrol using four and a half millimetre hook throughout, um, which will be row 12. I'm then going to change yarn to grape and I'll work one row in grape. So that'll be row 13. So I'll get that done and see you at the end. Right then, I've just worked the end of row 13. So you can see I've got my two uh, petrol rows in there and one row of grape. And we are currently on the right side of the work. 
Um, I'm going to make my turning chain and turn to the wrong side. Bobbles are made on the wrong side of the work. So, but don't worry, don't worry about that because they sort of happen naturally and work really, really well. Um, so you just need to remember that uh, when you're on a bobble row, you need to be on a wrong side row. So we're now going to start row 14. Okay, still with grape, but we've got gold waiting in the wings, ready to make those um, pumpkin-y bobbles so that they've got a lovely contrast. Um, I'm going to start by making one double crochet in the first four stitches of these row of this row. So one, two, three, and four. And on the next double crochet, so double crochet number five, I'm going to do what we normally do when we change colour, which is to say I'm going to pull through my colour my new colour on the last pull through and I can't find the end of it <laughs> hold on Let's talk among yourselves here we go so I've got the gold here and I'm just going to pull through a loop on the last pull through of that fifth double crochet all right so we are not disconnecting we're not cutting grape we're leaving that but we've now got gold attached and ready to work with right this is where we need to be a bit wary of our ends our ends need to stay on this side of the work okay we don't want them going behind the work because they will show on the front side this is the front side remember the right side and we don't want we want all the workings to be kept on this side so any yarns you're not using just keep to the right keep them out of the way so we're now going to make a bobble and the way we're going to make a bobble is by we're going to go into the next stitch first of all so before you do anything just make sure you can identify the next stitch where i've got these yarns leaning to the right it can sort of obscure a bit so just make sure you're working into the next unused stitch bobbles are made using five incomplete treble stitches so if you've ever treble two together or anything like that you'll know what I mean by an incomplete treble stitch you just work up to the very last stage but don't work the last stage let me show you what I mean so we start in the normal way with a yarn around the hook and I'm going to go into the next stitch a little bit tricky with all these ends to start with but it does get a bit easier okay so i will pull up a loop and go through the two loops on the hook that's the first stage of my treble now normally i would yarn around the hook again and go through those last two loops wouldn't i but i'm not going to do that i'm going to leave that incomplete and that is what i mean by an incomplete treble so that is number one here's number two going into the same stitch yarn round and through the first two loops but don't complete the stitch so i've now got three loops on the hook and again two loops and leave it incomplete so then have four on the hook and this is number four five loops on the hook and number five so you will end up with six loops on the hook in gold six gold loops on the hook that's what you're aiming for with your bubble I'm going to drop the gold yarn now again keeping it on this side of the work pick up the grape and pull through all of those gold loops with the grape and I did you see I just gave that a little pull not too tight you don't want to lose um, the first stitch at the top there just give everything a little pull and before we look at the front side, I'm going to do a couple more stitches just to really place that nicely. So again, I'm pulling the, the gold yarn just slightly to the right because I want to expose the next unused stitch. And if you look like that, it can, it can be hidden. So just move that out of the way so you can see the next unused stitch. We don't want to lose any stitches on this row. I'm back with grape and I'm going to make my double crochet in there just for now just so you can see when I turn the work there is our beautiful first bobble board slash pumpkin okay so go back to the front again let's have a look at our pattern repeat so I've done one double crochet as I said please be careful to make sure that goes into the correct stitch I'm going to do two double crochet and three 
double crochet so three clear double crochet nothing happening with those at all and what we're going to do we want to carry our yarn across the back our gold yarn across the back here's a little sample piece um, with yarn carrying across the back okay and you can just see that the the yarns are sort of skipping behind the stitches and from the front um you can't really see them at all so that's what we're achieve we're, we're going to try and achieve here and how we're going to do that is we're just going to catch this yarn in so i've done the three um normal double crochet i'm now going to bring the gold yarn to the left and put my hook underneath it before I make my next double crochet. So when I go into the fourth stitch to make my double crochet, I have caught that gold yarn in. Can you see? It's caught there. It's starting to um, sort of run across the back of the work, which is what we want. Right, so two more. So so um, this is row, this is number five and six. Okay, and on the seventh double crochet, I'm going to drop the grape and pick up and work with the gold again. So let me just go through the numbers of double crochet there. Complete your bobble and do three straightforward double crochet. Then you'll catch the yarn in on the fourth double crochet. Five and six are uncomplicated. And number seven, you're going to change to the gold yarn on the last pull through ready for your next bobble so let's do another one so grape yarn make sure it's sitting over so you can see it so you can see the yarn and sort of hold it to the right to keep it out of the way yarn around the hook and into the next stitch and this is where we're going to do those incomplete five double uh, five treble crochet so that's one that's two just remember don't go through the last stage three Four and six gold loops on the hook. So I'm going to drop the gold, pick up the grape and pull through all of those loops. Give it all a little bit of a tighten so that it, it um, creates that nice roundness of the, of the bobble. Hold the gold just to the right, just so you can see the next stitch. Three straightforward uncomplicated double crochet then we're going to catch in the yarn on the next one so remember hook goes under the gold through the work complete the double crochet and it's caught in two more uncomplicated double crochet and on the third we would change to gold to start our next bobble so again dropping the the grape down this side of the of the work picking up the gold and off we go so that's your repeat okay and you are going to work across your piece obviously yours is substantially larger than mine so i've only got a few i've only got a few um bobbles to make but you will have 21 to work across and when you've made 21 bobbles you will have five double crochet left to work um, at the end okay so i'm going to have fewer at the end but don't worry too much about that you will have five at the end and i will then just show you what happens um, on, on the um on the next row so i'll get to the end and i'll see you there Right, I'm now pulling through with the grape yarn on the last bobble and I can now cut the gold yarn. Okay, so you should now have five stitches left. I've only got a couple. Don't worry about me. You will have five. You will complete just normal double crochet into those stitches. Whoops. And then you're going to make your turning chain and just look at them <laughs> aren't they fabulous absolutely lovely so you can see now why it works so well working them from the back 
um, they just pop through beautifully um, and just just wonderful now if you find it tricky working in that contrast color you can always work in in the normal color you're working with so you don't have to sort of wrestle and wrangle all those ends you'll just get a very lovely sort of textural bobble rather than a contrast bobble so have a go with that if that if that sort of appeals um and also you know put bobbles in your crochet why not it's they're just lovely aren't they right so we're now on row 15 and you are going to start by making five double crochet so i'm going to pretend that i've made five double crochet along with you because i just want you to count your stitches here because as i said on the last row it can be easy to overlook certain stitches so this is a good time to check them so let's start counting you've done your five you're then going to get to a the gold stitch all right so at the top of the bobble is a gold stitch so one gold you should now have seven grape between them um, and as I'm working these stitches, I would like to point out that do not work under. Can you see that the gold thread is going over the top of my hook? Don't do that. Don't work it in because you will end up, I've made the mistake, so you don't have to. You will end up with yours looking like this. So you can see it through the front, can't you? Don't do that. Let it float and it will be completely in invisible. Sorry, right. So... Um, that's two, three, four, oops, five, six, and seven. So that's what you're aiming for. You're aiming for seven grape between each gold stitch, and your gold stitch should fall at the top of your bobble. Okay, so do that all the way along. Have a good count because any correction needs to happen now, really. I was just going to throw everything else out. Um, not nice to rip back, I know, but the best time to do it before you get another two rows of bobbles on or try and get another two rows of bobbles on. So you need seven grape between your gold stitches, gold stitch at the top of a bobble and five grape either end. That's what you're aiming for. Okay. Right, I'm getting towards the end now and my stitch count is fine. Um, and I'm going to stop at the end, snip my yarn and pull through um, with khaki. All right, so I'm now at the beginning. Oh, where's my yarn end gone? There it is. I am now at the beginning of row 16. And I'm going to work one row of double crochet in khaki. That's row 16. And then I'm going to change yarns at the end of the row to graphite. And I'm going to row, work row 17 in graphite. I'm going to meet you back at the beginning of row 18, which is where we're going to change to meadow and start our next row of bobbles. Okay, I'm at the end of row, what row is it? 17, which is the graphite row. And you can see I'm working into the khaki row. So I've got a row of khaki and a row of graphite. And I'm going to change the yarn colour on the last pull through to meadow. Um, and we're going to work a row of bobbles in meadow. And we're just going to do one row of meadow. Okay, so not the sort of multiple rows we did for our first row of bubbles, just a single row of meadow. So I've done the pull through there in meadow. I can now cut khaki, sorry, graphite, cut graphite for now. And we're going to work our bubbles. Um, so we're on row, what row are we on? Row 18, we're going to work our bubbles in spice. Beautiful. Right, so same same thing as before, we'll make our turning chain and the actual pattern is the same insofar as we have seven stitches, seven meadow stitches between our bobbles. Okay, but before we get there, we're just slightly different at the beginning and the end of the work. We've got, um, we're going to start with nine double crochet at the beginning this time rather than um five and i'm just going to work over my ends as well so nine double crochet there's one two 
two, eight, and here's number nine. And this is where I'm going to change to spice uh, on the last pull through. So this is where our first bubble is going to happen. And just a reminder, because we've we've made the bubbles, so we know how they work, but let's just do a couple in spice and see what they look like. So the pull through of the last, uh, of, of uh, double crochet number nine there is in spice. My ends are sitting in at the front of the work here. They're not going to the back because that would make them appear on the right side of the work. and We don't want that. And if you remember, it is a little bit twiddly to start with, but it gets easier, doesn't it? So yarn around the hook, make sure to work into the next stitch along. Don't skip a stitch by accident because of all those yarn, uh, yarn ends getting in the way. And we're just making the five incomplete treble stitches. So that was one, that's two. There's three. Yarn is caught up a little bit there. There we go. Three, four, and five. So we've got six loops on the hook. We're going to drop spice, pick up meadow, and pull through just as we did before. There's no change whatsoever. And now our repeat goes back to being familiar because we're going to work three double crochet making sure not to miss a stitch just in case that lovely bobble is sort of concealing that first stitch one two and three and catch our yarn catch our spice yarn in the next stitch remember so um, we're bringing up the spice and we're going to just go our hook will go underneath it before we go into our next stitch and once we've completed a double crochet you can see that the yarn is held securely in place so three more double crochet and switching through or changing yarn color to spice on that third so letting go of meadow there picking up spice and pulling through and we are ready for another bobble. So that should look very familiar to you. And that is what you are going to do throughout this row until you've made 20 bobbles this time, 20 bobbles, and you'll have nine stitches remaining at the end. Okay, so I'm gonna finish my row working just as we've been working before until I get to those last few stitches. Okay, so I'm now, I've finished the last bobble and you will have nine double crochet stitches here to finish this row. Now, I'm gonna just show you on my completed sample. Hang on, let me just get to the last stitch. Ooh, leave that there. Just going to show you that you will see the row of bobbles, the orange or the spice bobbles that are on the meadow yarn. You can see that is a single row, can't you? You can see it's a single um, meadow row. And what we so that's actually the center point of this piece. And now what happens is we just uh, mirror what's happened before. So we worked up to it with khaki graphite meadow and we're now mir mirroring it. So we're going to go graphite khaki back through the grape with the uh, with the identical row of bubbles there, back through petrol and we're also going to put a row of storm blue which is sort of then you can see that whole piece is repeated. So really um, we are now at the point where um, you've got everything you need to complete this um, particular piece. Just want to remind you, I'm going to just go through this khaki row because I just want to remind you to count um, to count as you work this first row of double crochet into a bobble. Make sure you don't miss the top 
stitch. So let's just have a look at that and then I will leave you be. Right, I can now cut meadow. I'm going to pull through with graphite. And again, like I said, I just want to remind you to count your stitches here. So one turning chain, you're going to count nine double crochet to begin with. Okay, I've got fewer, so I'm not going to count those with you because it will just confuse matters. But you're going to have nine here. I'm just working over some ends. Um, and once you've counted those nine, we're back to that familiar, uh, those familiar numbers for our bubbles row. All right, so you count your nine meadows, meadow colour stitches, and then at that point, you should have a spice stitch. All right, this one here, that's the top of your bobble. So one spice. Now you're going to have seven meadow before you get to your next spice. Don't forget, do not work in that end. Make sure your hook does not pick up spice as well, or it will show through the front like mine does on my sample. We don't want that. Um, so seven stitches between bobbles. Okay, make sure to count seven stitches between bobbles. Make sure to count one um, spice colored stitch or whatever color your bobble is, one of those in the top of it, um, all the way along. And then your last count of stitches at the other end will be nine. So just give that a good old count. Make sure you've got the right stitch number before you move on. And as I said, you're now just going to mirror what has gone before. So from this point, you're going to do your khaki row and then you're going to, um, you're going to go into your grape, grape strip or stripe with the, the, the gold bubbles on. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish that and uh, we'll have a look at the two completed pieces together at the end. few stitches on row 26 which brings us to the end of part six so I'm going to cut my yarn and place that last stitch on a holder which is just a safety pin and then we will have a look at the two two pieces together here's one here's two and we have got <laughs> some very lovely fields of pumpkins, um, which are just perfectly apt for October, aren't they? So that was part six. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you really hope you enjoy making your fields of pumpkins and that you can now use bobbles in lots and lots of crochet projects because they're brilliantly fun to make. <laughs>